Let us understand one way that passwords are compromised and how we can protect better against those type of attacks. When passwords are entered, for example, from a keyboard, they are actually passed through something called a hash function, and more on that later, that produces or is used in, in many systems, in Unix and also in Windows. The, the, not the password, but the user ID that the, pass, that the user has. And a hash of such password are actually added into a table. Okay. Now, what is a hash and why is that so strong? So passwords are called one function because they are very easy to compute in one way, but very hard in the opposite direction. So when you have a password passed through a hash function, and let's say that we're going to use a common one as an example, which is hash uh, SHA-256, which is either 256 bits or 32 characters, and that's again for SHA-256, a very popular hash function. So, and this is such that, you know, you may have like three characters or just one character or N characters, it doesn't matter. You're going to get, regardless of the password length, you're going to get 256 of a unique value that, again, is very easy to compute in that direction, I mean, given the password, give me the hash, easy, fast, but it's impossible to do in the opposite direction, meaning I give you the hash, can you figure out the password? No way, Jose. Now, also, if you were to change just one bit, not even one character, but one bit of that thing that you pass to the hash function, in this particular case, the password, you get a hash that is totally different with just one bit of change. So, again, one 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 way function. Other popular algorithms are MD5 and probably older uh, MD5 uh, and SHA1, etc. So, but they all have the same way. Again, easy one way, hard in another way. Then, why is it that such a problem is is when this database or password gets compromised? If all the bad guys get a bunch of user IDs and a bunch of riverish, riverish, you know, that they cannot figure out. The user IDs are, are, are you know, in clear text, but the, the hashes, if this one-way function, then what's the problem also? Uh, if you try to guess a password using brute force type of mechanism, well, you have many sites that limits the number of attempts that you can do, you can fail during login and after three fails or whatever, the, the account gets compromised. So brute force doesn't play a role here. So how is it that they get uh, compromised? You probably remember that, you know, Yahoo, LinkedIn, I mean, so many, you know, databases with millions, um, probably billions of passwords has already been compromised. And what is it that the, that the bad guy has? Well, when, when I compromise a database that is not properly uh, protected, what the bad guys have been able to come up with and different mechanisms, this is a bunch of commonly used passwords. So, For example, the bad guys know that monkey, I don't know, beats me why, is, is a password commonly used and they have a hash, you know, an SHA 256 or whatever, and they can have multiple uh, algorithm doesn't have to be just one. The, the word password with a zero instead of the O is actually something very common and the bad guys, you know, they do get uh, the hash for that one and and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, we're talking about millions. So what you think it is, oh, nobody's going to come up with this password. Well, chances are that somebody else in the world have and that the database has been compromised and 
the, the bad guy has that list of passwords, they also combine that with dictionary words. So they take the entire dictionary, which you may think it is big, but for computers it's not that big, and they compute the hashes. So what they, what they build is a table which actually has a bunch of hashes, billions of those, and those hashes that table has the associated password being used to get that hash. Okay? And this is what is called a rainbow table. It's a fancy name because you get to get a treasure at the end of the rainbow. I don't know wh why they, they pick up that name. But, but, but that table is just the reverse of this table. You know, actually of this table that you know you have a user ID and you have a hash you, you don't know you, you don't know anything but oh, kind of a different what, what this rainbow table is is I have a bunch of hashes millions of them and I have the password that is associated with it so if I am given a hash all I have to do is look up on this table and that's computers do that very fast and very way I can Give me the hash. I can tell you what uh, password that hash uh, was uh, made of, and then then they defeat this reverse, you know, property of the hash. In reality, the hash are still reversed. But if you do this pre-computation ahead of time, and you have you know this with ten terabytes of nothing but bunch of hashes with the equivalent password that made the hash, then when a new password database is compromised, the bad guys go quickly to work and, you know, take everyone, I mean, th that, that table, let's say that they compromise this table, where they have a bunch of user IDs, they are, the user IDs are on the clear, but they, these are hashes. Well, so they have user IDs and a hash, but with the lookup table, the rainbow table, they can easily get the password. And unless your password is truly unique, and that's what you need to have very complex password, monkey isn't one of them, uh, then they're going to be able to find that there is a match between a hash on that table and a user ID. Aha! And typically the user ID is often the case that it is the email address of the individual. Okay, now I can go to site X, bank Y, and go and try that public user ID that is that is not encrypted with the hash that I found that the guy used on this database that got compromised because chances are that he's reusing the same password or slight variation of that password in other sites. Therefore, I guess that by now you, you can easily explain anyone why you should use a different password, a unique password for every site and system. And unique in terms of, you know, I use monkey123 on one, I'm going to use monkey345 in the other one. I mean, it has to be more what is called entropy, more randomness. It, would look, it should look more like gibberish that other people cannot figure out. I'm going to give you some tips at the end on how you can uh, generate some of those. Now, how do we protect against this? Because it's actually protection. I mean, this happens to the databases that are poorly protected with only just a hash. Well, let's, let me show you why adding a little bit of salt fixes this problem. If at the moment that the password is being entered, before it's passed to the hash function, if I generate a random number, it's called a salt, or also called a nonce. I mean, it's not unique, it's not secret, but it's, it's kind of random at the moment that I'm inputting that password. And when I'm going to compute the hash function, I'm going to compute the hash function concatenating the password with the nonce, with that unique number. Oh, now this will give me a hash that is uh, truly unique. So, and if anyone compromises these and, and tries to create a rainbow table out of these, you will realize why two monkeys are not the same. Because 
if I enter monkey and the other guy also enter monkey, well, because of the nonce that is random, the hashes are going to be completely different. So, now, what people, and, and that's what is sold, a, a salted hash this is what this is called. What people also should do, and there have been mistakes being made in the past, is that you should store the salt in a separate database than when you stole the hashes. Because if the bad guys compromise them both, then the, you just made it a little harder. He will have to pre-compute a, a rainbow table uh, for, for, for that case, but that's that's all the inconvenience you add. It's, it's still defeatable. Again, keep the salt in a, in a separate protected database from the uh, from the one that you store the hash. And then when, when the user is logging in, you go ahead, oh, for that user ID, I pick up the salt from one database and I combine it with what the guys had entered. I put the hash and if I get the, uh, I put the nonce, I, I get the hash. And if I get the right hash that I have stored for that user, I know he entered the right password. So there are multiple ways of also making this scheme stronger. One is called multi-factor authentication and that, you know, we can talk for hours on that and the different kinds and and uh, and such, but, you know, they, they, make, they make it that you need to come up with not just a password, but also something else, typically something that you have or something that you are in the case of biometrics. Uh, also password managers, and they have to be good ones. I mean, there are some password managers that are really more on a, a security exposure that, that you know, has to be something I particularly like to use, uh, one that I know that even the owner of the application cannot figure out my password when I'm logging in and they, they with, because they do the cryptography right. But the, the idea of the password manager is that you don't have to remember the password. Therefore, the password can be, you know, gibberish, you know, something very difficult to guess. It's not a word associated with it. So something very cryptic, looks very random. And the password manager handles this complexity. So I don't have to, but again, it has to be a real, a real good password. If you don't have any of that, when one thing that you can do is like, let's, let's say that, let's pick up a theme. Uh, let's say that, you know, some, a, for example, a, a indigenous dialect of, whatever region and you remember a popular song and then from that region and then you're going to take the first characters of the of the lyrics of the song and then you're going to use that as, as the base of the password. I mean come up with your unique scheme uh, on it but don't forget that as millions and millions of passwords compromise what you think it is unique may not be so.